I'm David Salvam, I'm president of the Internet Society of New York, and uh, we're uh, today uh, we have Tom Warnock uh, here to uh, discuss his uh, mission to uh, uh, bring us the a .dot .mic uh, top level domain, and uh, we're going to throw it over to him. Right. Well, thank you, David. And uh, I'd like to thank the library for setting this up. It's so nice that it's allowed us to use this room, the uh, Jefferson Market Library and, I guess, the New York Public Library. And, uh, so uh, I'm going to jump right into this thing. And I think I talk about myself in here, if you want to know, you know a little background. So it, it'll kind of get filled in. And uh, the um, uh, topic for the evening is the uh, .NYC TLD. And it's creating a space on the internet for New York and New Yorkers. And I'll explain what TLD is as, as we go along, get into a little bit of detail. But it's, it's essentially we're talking about the network that connects, that connects us all. This is the network on the net I'm going to be dealing with uh, over the weekend. It's my favorite net, the volleyball net. And it connects people, but so does the internet. And we'll talk about that a little bit. I'm going to talk about four areas. Uh, that's uh, where we are now, where we want to go, uh, how we get there, and when. So, and I want to talk about this little chart for a little while, but uh, it talks about uh, internet media in uh, two communities in Terre Haute, Indiana, and in Community District 3, Queens, where I live. But uh, first, I want to take a little bit of a diversion for a civics lesson. Uh, so I want to talk about uh, New York City and how it works administratively. The city's divided into 59 administrative districts called community districts. And, uh, and if, am I able to move here? Is this going to be a disturbing thing or not? But uh, you know, so here's, uh, here's the city's map, and here's Queens and Brooklyn and Staten Island and Manhattan and the Bronx. And we're, we're in community district uh, two over here now. And I live in community district three. Uh, this is Bloody Airport. We have three, three communities there. We have Jackson Heights, North Corona, and East Elmhurst. And each of those 59 community districts, well, within those community districts, most of the city keeps all its administrative records. So typically a, a community district would have a police precinct, a sanitation district, a, uh, a, a, a parks bureau, or all different types of breakdowns of administrative districts in the city. And the purpose being to keep records so you can compare it year to year and find out what problems are and what issues need to be addressed. The, uh, each one of these districts has a community board. The boards are appointed by the borough president in consultation with the local council members. There are 50, typically 50 members on a board. I was on board three in Queens for 14 years. Uh, and uh, the, so I'm fairly familiar with how they work and, and certain problems that they have. Uh, I, I look upon the community boards as the, the first step in democracy's ladder, some type of an ideal uh, look at the, at the way our uh, society is supposed to work. And uh, it deals with, uh, at the bottom, is, is, is we the people, you know, it is all of us. And we're supposed to, if we have a, uh, in this ideal world, if we have a, a question or an issue, we would take it to our community board, and then we take it to our city council and move up the ladder to the state legislature and, and Congress in this ideal world. Uh, and um, basically, each step on this ladder involves a, a conversation between the people. That's the end of the civics lesson. Short one. But it helps to understand this, uh, this chart here, because uh, you know, to have this conversation, you need to have a, a discussion. And this democratic conversation is difficult at this point, because if I might compare two, two areas, this uh, Terre Haute, Indiana, it's a small city of about uh, 105,000 people, and Community District 3, where I live, uh, uh, North Corona, East Elmhurst, and Jackson Heights, we have 200,000 people. In Terre Haute, Indiana, where I went to college for a while, they have two television stations focused on the needs of those people. They have a daily newspaper, and they have eight radio stations focused on those 105,000 people. Uh, in Community District 3, we don't have any television stations. Now you might think we have channels 2, 4, 5, 7, 9, 11, whatever. Uh, but none of those focus on, on, on our community district. They all focus on, uh, on, on the region from the Empire State Building out uh, 90 miles to 17 million people who live there. So when there's a pothole in front of our house or Mr. McCarthy down the street's hungry or there's a, a suspected child abuse case or something, we can't call up uh, the New York Times or Channel 2 and ask them to come out and fill the pothole. You know, it's just not going to happen in our area. So uh, we have very 
for local communication. In my particular district, we have uh, some daily newspapers, some weekly newspapers that cover sections in the district, but there's you know, absolutely no mass media. It never has been, as far as I know. So tonight's presentation is about ways we can improve local commu communication using an internet resource called a TLD. A little technical background, Internet Society people, I'm sure very familiar, but some of the uh, audience are, are not uh, uh, Internet Society people. So uh, this is just a, uh, a very small amount of detail. And basically, it's the source of the uh, domain name system that runs the Internet. It's something that started in October 18, 1984, and it uh, talks all about uh, domain name system, top level domains and second level domains. Uh, familiar top level domains that are like .com, .edu, .gov, .netbiz, US, info. And second level domains are Amazon, AOL, eBay, NYU, NYC. These are second level domain names. And why do they call them top level domains? Um, Think of domain name system as a pyramid. Uh, and a name like auctions.ebay.com. At the top, the very top of the pyramid is, let's see, whoops, let me go back here. So this part, I'm going to jump up here again. So maybe I'm going to turn your head sideways a little bit, but uh, at the top is the .com, and the second level is the eBay or the AOL or what would that, the New York Times. And, Third level would be auction. So uh, if we look over here, it would be auction.ebay.com. So at least you are down like uh, 50 or so levels down. I don't think they're commonly used that way, but uh, you can have multiples. But it's just the, the top two levels that are really of interest to people. And those are the ones that, that people want for their businesses, for their ideas. Uh, how many TLDs are there? There are uh, 20 generic ones, .com, .org, .edu, the ones that you're generally familiar with. And plus there are country codes. Every country, uh, no, 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 you don't have to be too much of a country, but there are about 243 of them. So um, in, in the second level domain area, there are 72 million .com names out there, uh, 6 million names, second level names that end with .org, a million with .us, 32,000 .gov, and 2,500 with .edu. And every country has a top level domain, .us, .uk, France, and TV, you know, it's Tuvalu, right? Well, actually, I've learned it's Tuvalu. And uh, I don't know how many of you have been there, but this is a Google Earth picture of Tuvalu. And uh, I don't know how many miles up it is, but basically, it's, um, this is five, it's out in the uh, Pacific somewhere, it's an atoll, and these are the beaches around, and an open area, it's five miles across, 12 miles this way, and there are about 12,000 people who live down here. And if you zoom in on Google Earth, you'll find a little hut down here where I guess one guy lives who's a little concerned about the big city that's uh, over on the other end of the island. But uh, the important thing about Tuvalu is that it has a TLD. New York City doesn't. To the internet, there is no New York City. So, why do we want a TLD? For many reasons. The first is good domain names. The community that I come from, uh, I will first simply, a good domain name is short, descriptive, and memorable. Right? Coke.com, IBM.com, those are good domain names. In the dot-com world, where all the desirable ones sort of are, there are 72 million that are taken. So if you can imagine the uh, telephone books piled up about 13 feet, uh, that would be 72 million dot-com names, and there just aren't any good dot-com names left. It's actually changed the business world in certain respects. Uh, turned the business planning process upside down. Um, when I, the first business I ever started, uh, we came up with a product. I was in my early 20s. We came up with a product. And then we said, uh, well, that's the product. What are we going to call it? Uh, it was Forest Plax was the name of the big business. Uh, but these days, people go to uh, websites that have domain names, and they look for available domain names and then they start businesses. So someone may go on one of these websites and see that they can get flip-flop for uh, $500 or something, and say, well, we have $500 for a domain name in our budget. And they say, well, what can we do with flip-flop? You know, they'll start to imagine what a business would be like that use flip-flop. That's not the way businesses are, are supposed to be designed, I don't think. I mean, it's just not the traditional way. You know, maybe someone will find out that it's a great way to do things, but uh, I'm kind of doubtful. You know, I think you come up with a product and then a name, but there are no .com names left. 
an example of how few were left is this service called Ning, a social networking service that was started a couple of years ago by this guy, uh, Mark Anderson. He's an internet billionaire who was starting this social networking service, and he uh, called it Ning. You know, it's just a you know, good name, any name, a short, descriptive, and memorable. Now, Ning is short, descriptive I'm not sure about, and I guess it does rhyme with a few things, but it, it's, it's not uh, what I call a great domain name. And this is a guy with money, you know, he came up with that. So the people in my neighborhood, you know, where I come from, uh, in Jackson Heights, you know, we, we're, a, we're an immigrant community. Uh, we don't have, um, you know, back in uh, 97, a lot of people in our community, you know, they were just, just arriving, starting, uh, starting to earn, earn a living, trying to figure out how to get through the American system. Many of them now, they're, they're figuring out you know, how it's done, they have a little money, they want to start a business, they can't get domain names. You know? People just out of college, you can't get a good domain name. So one of the things that we want to do is we want to good, make good domain names with .nyc for small businesses, you know, Ricky's Cafe .nyc. Uh, for community groups, Astoria.nyc, Jackson Heights.nyc, uh, Charles Street, Perry Street.nyc, Pacific Affairs, so you can use names for like uh, community, CB3, Queens.nyc, not for profits, Conne that's my favorite, Connecting.nyc, that's going to be uh, ours, I hope. Uh, for individuals, you can get names for individuals, John Q. Public or whatever, .nyc, and for issues, things like congestion tax, .nyc. Uh, so why do you want that NYC? Each one of these names that you get has identity with it. It says it's made in New York or from New York. It's right with the name, everywhere there, you can't get away from it, it's perfect. Why else do you want it? So you can find things, all right? Internet is immense. 72 million dot coms, probably another 70 million other names. It's hard to find things there. Uh, this is New York City in uh, 1800. Uh, and uh, this is, uh, I think this is, it's probably like, the North River or the Hudson River. Yeah. Again, you got a ship in. I couldn't buy a ship in my picture. I think Wall Street's over here. It's a, a quaint little area, a quaint little city. And it was really nice, you know, cul-de-sacs. I think we go to Europe to go to places like this at this point. But in any case, the, uh, the, the city leaders at the time, thinking ahead, they established a commission to plan for the future. They created the Commissioner's Plan of 1811. And uh, in this picture here, you, on the right, is, this is from Queens. Uh, on the right is the United Nations and the Chrysler Building, and right through the middle there you see the sun. You know? And why is it that you can see the sun? You can see the sun because the Commissioner's Plan of 1811 created the Manhattan Street Grid. You know? From 1st Avenue to 12th Avenue, from 1st Street to 236th Street, or wherever it goes up there. And uh, it organized and made accessible New York City's real estate resources to great civil, civic and financial gain. Isn't there like one night a year where you can see the sun down every street? There is. I, 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 summer, I, summer, I'll, summer, I'll, I'll get an animation. I, I see it in the paper once in a while, and I say, well, I've got to go look. But uh, uh, that may be the day. I, I don't know. You know. I'm not sure. But um, so that's, that's the grid, how it laid it out. And, but it, you also, you know, if you start walking along Manhattan, you go from east to west, and now you go to First Avenue and Second Avenue, Third Avenue, all of a sudden, you know, you stumble into Lexington Avenue. And you say, why is that avenue there so short? And the answer is that the, you know, the wisdom of the time, uh, it created street corners. You know, corners are more valuable property. So they adjusted the, the real estate so that to make more street corners, make it more valuable, and at the same time, it made more community, more places to meet people. So uh, why do we want to New York State NYC? Is to organize and make accessible New York City's digital resources. And what are those digital resources? Uh, obvious ones, you know, like television and books and advertising and. Uh, all those types of things, you know, you, but it's also everything, you know, like hospitals, you know, you go to St. Luke's Hospital and find their spot on the web and you'll have 10,000 pages of information about St. Luke's and the services they offer. So virtually everything in New York has or will have a digital identity. We want to organize that in some way or another to make it available so you can find things. That's the reason we want to do it. The city has, for example, New York City has 402 hotels. Imagine someone's in uh, Dubai and they want to come to New York for a visit. And they go on the computer and they go into Google and they say, good hotels in New York or uh, hotels in New York City or it depends upon how they enter it. You know, if they do a good search, they'll come up with 2 million. If they do a lousy search, they'll have 90 million hits. What are those 402 hotels? I have no idea what's in all those pages. 
Uh, the same with city schools. You know, if someone's offered a job in Ohio and they want to come to New York and they want to look at uh, see if they have good schools here. They go on Google and they say New York City schools. Depending upon how they enter it, they get between two million and 174 million hits for 2,400 schools. And same with hospitals. You know, this is a vital resource. You know, you got a pain in the back. You want to have something done with it. You go on Google. Boy, you'll be dead before you find something good. Between a million and 144 million hits you'll get with this vital resource. So why, are you, why dot NYC? So you can find things. You know, we want to create directories. One of the things we want to do is create directories. So you'd have something like hotels.nyc. So in hotels.nyc, just imagine is that you know you go to there and you and you find a little map that shows hotels in Queens, in Brooklyn, whatever, Manhattan, uptown, downtown, they have alphabetical listing, maybe it's broken down by cost. That links to the hotel's websites. You know, this is a very nice service for, for people coming to New York. You know, make it a lot easier for them to find our resources. We do the same thing for schools, for hospitals, for bars, for restaurants, banks, bakeries, whatever. Also, we want to make it a more intuitive city. You know, we want to make it a more intuitive internet. You know, there's an IBM.com, there's a Coke.com, and I imagine, I've never looked for it, but I'm certain there's a Gucci.com. And if I go on the, the web and I enter now Gucci.com, I find it just intuitively. You know that these big companies have things. When I look out my window, I, I see uh, I see Ricky's Cafe. Yeah. Ricky's Cafe is a nice little place, 74th Street, 37th Avenue. Uh, I wouldn't think to enter Ricky'sCafe.com into into the uh, uh, into my website. You know, I know that they don't have Ricky'sCafe.com, or I wouldn't imagine they do. You know, I, I'd be very surprised. I should check, and make sure that they don't. But I'd be astonished if they did. Uh, what we want in the future is we want to have intuitive names so that you'd go home and you'd, if you saw Ricky's Cafe, you'd think, yeah, well, it's probably ricky'scafe.myc, and you'd go there. You'd go directly to these places rather than have to go through Google for everything. So for every small business, you know, they'd be able to a good, good name, good domain name. So why else? All right, proximity and networking. Uh, this is the historic role for the city. This is what we, uh, that, this is what we exist for, right? This is a... Uh, uh, some shots of some cities around the world, but cities are places where people get together to share ideas, opinions, feelings, passions, products, and services. These are two um, networking maps. This, this is a networking map, but maybe a conference. You know, everybody gets together for plenary and they break out to different rooms to discuss things, and then they have a cocktail party over here. Uh, this is a networking map of, of the internet, an old one. I mean, if we put it on the wall here, and it would have such fine detail that we wouldn't really be able to figure it out, but those are two types of networking maps. Now, I, I have a uh, networking map of New York City. I don't know how it'll show up here. It's, uh, yeah, it's about right. That's, that's my networking map of New York City. It's basically people of every uh, shape, size, and shade uh, interacting in different ways. Right? This, this is the way that I see the internet, and this is the way New York exists to me. But, uh, and this is the way it was for 400 years. Then about 1995, we were globalized. Our, our typical city, all of a sudden we had .com, .net, .org. This disrupted, these disrupted traditional civic communication. Now, I don't have a, a lot of uh, um, uh, experience on, on how, what the impact of this will be, but I, I know a couple of uh, little examples of, of what it might be. One of the things that it, it kind of monetized junk, you know, used to be that you had a, you'd have a uh, an old lamp or something like that, and you'd take it down, and you were ready, you were finished with it, so you take it down to the Boy Scouts or the Girl Scouts or the PTA, and they'd sell it off and make a few bucks. Uh, these days, everyone looks at it and they say, hey, that's uh, you know, sell it on eBay, you know, I mean, you make a lot of money. I mean, so you know, does that affect the uh, Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts? I, I'm really not sure. Uh, by the way, I do love that lamp. Is that, I wouldn't sell that for a million dollars. I'm going to go on eBay and see if I can get one myself. But uh, in any case, um, yeah, another example is, uh, it used to be that if you were of the Catholic persuasion, you'd go down to your local church, you'd talk to Father Hoppy, and you'd tell, ask him your questions about the catechism or religion or whatever, and uh, you know, he'd give you some answers. These days, you, know, you go right to the Vatican. You, know, you go to vatican.va, and there's more information about the Catholic Church than, than you can imagine. You know? so, um, so what's the long-term impact of this? You know, what, what are we, how are these things, how is, how is it tearing our civic fiber, fabric to have these things? I'm really not sure. You know, I'm sure a few decades from now, 
the library will have lots of books, or I guess they'll have files uh, uh, about the subject, you know, by anthropologists and sociologists and what have you. But I knew, do know the uh, impact that one technology had on the city, and that is the automobile. About 100 years ago, this guy, fellow here, this is Henry Ford, he came to New York and said, listen, I got a, I don't know, it's a Model T or Model A or whatever that thing is there. They said, I've got this new, new invention here, and it, it's really grand. It'll uh, clean up the horses. It won't stink as much, and drop, have these droppings all over the place. You should really, uh, you know, uh, let, let's, uh, let's take a look at this, and let's make it part of our city. And, and we did. You know? I mean, with hindsight, it's easy to see that there were problems. You know, 40 years later, this problem, uh, you know, this was the South Bronx. You know, this was the, what this was, was a, um, this, was, this block was filled in here. This is a, a block wide by a mile, mile and a half long, and there were buildings like these, you know, six-story buildings with 15,000 people in them that were evicted to put this cross Bronx Expressway to get people from the Northeast uh, to get them over to the George Washington Bridge. So uh, anyone who grew up uh, or uh, during the 60s or thereafter will remember the troubles we had. And was it caused by, by this, by this uh, road going through the city? Uh, I'm not sure, but uh, certainly we didn't prepare well for the automobile. And we haven't prepared well for the internet because no one's given us an opportunity to. But the new .NYC top-level domain allows us to think about the role of the internet vis-a-vis -vis our city for the first time. It's a clean slate we can design our city on. No one ever came to New York City and said, you know, uh, we're, we're, we're imagining this new, this new uh, uh, network and we'd like to know how it meets the city's needs. No one ever did that. You know, it was something that was used to communicate between different agencies and such, and uh, eventually it kind of snuck out of the lab and grew, grew monstrously. No one ever came to New York and asked us, uh, how do you want to, your network to work? But now, for the first time, we have an opportunity, a clean slate to draw it on. So the role of .NYC TLD is to reconnect the city, to reestablish its historic role, change our networking map a little bit, to look more like that with .NYC in the center. Don't mean to get away with it, to rule out the others, or to, they'll be around, absolutely, but uh, to be more coordinated, make it work for city needs. So uh, the .NYC TLD's benefits, good domain names, directory of resources, identity, every single name, you know, every time you send an email to someone, every time they look at your address, it markets our city, it makes the world aware that we're here. And also a more intuitive internet. But there's more. I like that one. Anybody know who that guy is? Pope Peel. That's Mr. Pope Peel selling his uh, slices and dices. But uh, what we found out last year was that there's a, there are really public interest benefits to the internet and to, to a TLD if, if they're managed right. And uh, I was lucky enough to work with a Michael Gerstein on a paper on a white paper called uh, Towards City T TLDs in the Public Interest where we identified about a dozen specific benefits that come from operating the top level, you know, by operating a city top level domain in a public interest. And uh, I'll tell you where you can find that, I'm not going to go into the details on that, but uh, I just want to highlight or discuss one of them, and that is a, an element of a city nexus, uh, that we want to have a, like a more secure internet. And a nexus means that, uh, it's a legal term, that means that you have a connection to an area. So uh, we're trying to figure out who, who gets access to these names. You know, we want it to be something that's really that, that, that's a prized possession in the city. And, and can we give them out to just anybody like .com does or .info or these other uh, domains? Uh, we want to create some type of a, an accountability. And uh, one way to do it, and, and the lawyers say it's difficult, but is to require a, a nexus. And that, that would mean that you either, uh, that you work in the city that you pay taxes in the city, that you vote in the city, you own property, uh, you run a business, or in some other way you have a, a connection with the city. And the idea is that we, we would like that NYC to be a, a safe, secure place that people would send their, feel, they'd feel safe sending their children there, for instance, as, as safe as someone might, as safe as a parent might feel sending a child to, um, uh, excuse me. Uh, to a dot .com, or, uh, not a dot .com, but a, uh, a dot .gov or a dot .edu site. So um, we would like people to feel that way about uh, dot .myc. That, uh, you know, and not only that, that, we would like to create it that it's, it's a safe place, you know, that, that you're not going to find uh, you know, spammers and uh, all the other bunch of thieves that you find uh, on the internet. So we're trying to find a, a way for the city to manage that, the city being you and I and everyone in this room. So 
Uh, that's one of our real interests, and, and trying to operate it in the public interest is, is really quite vital. Uh, and um, we also see it as an urban planning tool. That the domain names, you know, domain names used for residents for issues and organizations, civic names, which I'll talk about uh, in a moment, uh, civic names as starting points for conversations and participation on the web. Uh, uh, also, domain names for democratic conversation. Same thing, you know, Astoria.com. How can we use that to create a space, uh, maybe a media space, where people in Astoria can gather and discuss issues that are concerned to them? So civic applications is something that we're really interested in because we're a not-for-profit organization. And uh, what we really want to do is uh, make the TLD, make New York City a, a better place. And so we have this idea of uh, civic. We have the civic project that has three parts, civic spaces, civic tools, and civic education. The civic spaces are, are essentially names. Names like gov.myc, sustainable, NYC, uh, your name, voter.myc, historia.myc, news.myc. These are civic spaces where, where, things, where things can happen. And uh, in those spaces, you need tools to operate. We would like to make tools available, different computer programs, social connecting tools. So things like they have on Facebook and LinkedIn these days. To make them available to people uh, on the, in, the, in the civic names. And uh, our job, connecting.myc, is, is a New York State not-for-profit. And our job, we're an educational organization. Our job is to show New Yorkers and New York organizations how to use civic tools and civic spaces. We have a long way to go before we can do, the, do our job, but that's what we're working on. And I think I get to that real soon. Uh, exactly, okay. How do you do this? How do you get a, a top level domain? Um, this thing started, this project started in April of 2001. Community Board 3, which I was a member of at the time, I was a member for 14 years, uh, we passed something called an Internet Empowerment Resolution that said, get .myc. Uh, it wasn't really very specific at the time. All it said was that, uh, that the, the city government or a public interest organization should acquire the .myc top level domain. So we passed this Internet Empowerment Resolution and we made a lot of progress right away. Our, our council member, our, uh, our now borough president, our congress member, Joe Crowley, they were all in favor of it. It was moving along swimmingly until 9-11. Everything stopped, obviously. Most anything good in the city stopped for a while. And, uh, but in 2003, the opportunity arose again to get a top-level domain. And I started on this effort to try and uh, get the city involved in the project. I, I was knocking on every door. I was asking people here, there, and everywhere that, uh, you know, you should, you should do this. You should, uh, this is great for New York City. I got into City Hall. I, I spoke to one of the uh, deputy mayor's assistants, and uh, I never heard. And, uh, yeah, somewhat later, you know, hindsight, I, I uncovered the idea that uh, the city was focused on the Olympics at the time. You know, the city wanted the 2012 Olympics. That was the only focus New York had. City Hall was focused 2012, 2012, 2012, and uh, it was thought that there was a, um, you know, another international effort of, of this sort would be difficult to do. If, uh, difficult to do, and again, the Olympics were it. Regrettably, we didn't get the Olympics, but uh, in any case. Um, the, the, the window closed and there was no opportunity to apply for top level domains. And there really hasn't been since then. Uh, uh, in, uh, but in 2005, I got a call from uh, Dirk Krishanowski. Dirk runs a uh, Doc Berlin project. He's trying to get the top level domain Doc Berlin. And he called me up. He found some stuff that I published on, on the web and said, listen, uh, you know, the opportunity's coming again. Uh, ICANN's going to be issuing top level domains. Uh, is New York City going to do it? And, and I said, no, no, you know, I had spent an enormous amount of time on this. You know, in 2001, when we passed that resolution, I was done. You know, I walked out of my community board meeting that night and I thought I was finished with this thing. And I put in all that effort in 2003 and, uh, and I, I was very reluctant. But he kept pestering me and he sent me some stuff that he'd written. He'd written some really good stuff pointing out other advantages of it. So ultimately I said, okay, I'll, I'll put some effort into it. And, and I went out and I started knocking on the same doors again, sending me letters to City Hall, talking to civic organizations, and, uh, but nobody, still, nobody was interested. So uh, reading Dirk's papers, reading my own papers again, I said, this is a really good idea. I said, we really should do this. And uh, I decided to put some time in on it. So I, I, I resigned from the community board and I put my creative and civic efforts into a new not-for-profit that we created, Connecting.NYC Incorporated. And our goal is to acquire and develop the .NYC top-level domain. Now, how do you get one of these things? Believe me, it's very complex. 
It's been going on for years, <coughs> pardon me. <coughs> the process has been going on for years. And uh, on paper, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's even on paper, it's a mess. But there's this, uh, this National Telecom Telecommunications and Information Administration issued a notice of a pool, proposed rulemaking for, about the domain name system. You know, so if you were to put all of these uh, alphabet soups in a bag and, and shake it up, uh, in, in essence, the U.S. government asked the world, how do we manage the Internet's domain name system, uh, .com, .org, .edu? This is when 97, the Internet was growing like crazy. They didn't know what to do with it. There were no plans. You know, this thing just escaped from a lab, essentially. Uh, they asked, how do we manage what's there now? And how do we issue new top-level domain names? Uh, so the U.S. Department of Commerce told one of its subdivisions, the NTIA, uh, to, to find a solution, and they did. They formed, uh, in conjunction with the industry, something called the Internet Corporation for Sign Names and Numbers, ICANN. ICANN is a California not-for-profit. It was formed in 1998. It has 15 board members. It's very much an international organization. These 15 board members are from around the world. There are two or three from every continent. Every four months they get together and they discuss internet issues. They're never together other than those meetings. The next time they're going to meet is in Paris next month. Time after that, I think is October, they're going to meet in Cairo. After that, it's somewhere in the Far East. Now, every four months they meet in some other uh, exotic area around the world. Uh, in 2004, they started again. People were getting on that back. They said, listen, you guys were formed to issue new TLDs. You're not doing much of a job on it. A lot of pressure built up, and they started something called the policy development process in 2004. The policy development process was focused on the process to issue new TLDs. And last, uh, last July, there, just about last July, they finally came out, after four years, they came out with a, a report. This a subunit of ICANN said, uh, this, is about, this is the best we can think about. These are all our thoughts after four years of creating uh, the process for issuing new top-level demands, uh, domains. And they decided to... Um, and they start, this came up with a schedule. And what's supposed to happen is a draft RFP, or request for proposals, is supposed to be issued in July. Um, uh, and then there's a little time process after that. Let's see if I have that here. Uh, well, let me go back, all right? So, so what do you have to do to, to get these things? Let me tell you what it takes to get a, a, a domain name. You have to have a good plan. I mean, you have to have the technical, financial, and management wherewithal to operate a top-level domain. You know, you wouldn't want someone to go in and uh, ask for uh, Charles's Bakery .mic and end up at Charles's Bakery in London or something like that. So you, know, you want to make sure the internet works right. Absolutely. Yeah. So we have to prove to them that we have that capability. We also have to prove that we have local support. Uh, that's a little more difficult for us because uh, we're a big city. You know. Uh, uh, other places, you know, if you can imagine it like a local support or a community support is what they really call for. If you go for a name like that bank, you know, if you would just think of what the banking, what they'd expect to, to be the banking community. So, you know, if they had the National Association of Banks and the uh, European Association of Banks and the, and the Deutsche Banks and Citibank, and they all got in a room and they all signed an agreement saying, we want that bank to be issued because we're going to help us run more secure banks. The ICANN would look at their proposal and they say, yeah, yeah, okay, you guys are the banking community. And they say, you know, you got the money, you got the technical, okay, here's Dot Bank. In our case, you know, we're a city, you know, we're applying for Dot NYC. And what is the New York City community? You know, obviously it's all of us in the room here. Uh, it's the schools, it's the government, it's the businesses, it's the truck drivers, it's everybody walking down the street. It's all of us. That's the community. You know, so how do we, how do we convince ICANN that we have community support? And that, that's why I'm here right now. That's what I've been doing for about a year and a half now, trying to figure out how we gather the community support to convince ICANN that indeed this is, we do represent, when our application gets to them, that it represents the city of New York. I've been having a lot of success. I really like this, this event. Other events like this, I'm we're, we're absolutely delighted to go to. And uh, also we have a lot of stuff, we have a lot of stuff on the web. We have, a, we have a website, we have a wiki, we have a blog. We have presentations like this that are on the web. So there's a lot of different ways that we're trying to engage the public in those. And I'll talk about that a little later on. And the third part of the steps to success to get a top level domain is you have to have a responsive application. So they're going to issue an application and they're going to say, you know, 
fill in the, fill in the boxes and uh, convince us that you have the, the good, good management, technical, whatever, the community, and give us a check. They're going to want a check for anywhere between 250, between 50 and $250,000 to go along with this application. Uh, the final RFP will uh, spell out exactly where that is. So overall, the timetable again. We formed Connecting.NYC last April. The ICANN draft RFP is expected out in July. Uh, we hope to submit a proposal next March. Actually, the, the official um, date at this point is still January of 2009, uh, but I, I've learned after being involved with this for a number of years that for, for every two days we move forward, we get one day closer to the application period. So I'm, I'm estimating at this point that next March we'll have to submit our, our application. And then if that's the case, then in October we would get an okay from ICANN, and uh, we would be open to the public in March of 2010. And open to the public, what does that mean? That means that you can go to your, uh, uh, to your computer and you can type in rickyscafe.nyc and go to Ricky, Ricky's Cafe website. You can go to astoria.nyc and we go to astoria's.nyc's website. Same with connecting.nyc, John Q. Public, Eugene. Uh, Congestiontax.nyc, sustainable.nyc, these names would start to work. Wouldn't happen overnight. You know, it'll be a slow process as people adapt. But there are certain parts that would be um, uh, that would be that would come quicker than others. But basically, in uh, what did I say? That was my last guess? March 2010. These names would start working. The internet would work for us, and we could start building a better city. So, summary: uh, Why .myc? The easy things are names, domain names. You know, we get zillions of domain names right away. Each one has identity. It says it's from, made in New York City, and the directory hotels. NYC, schools NYC, bakeries NYC, whatever. The hard things are building this this trust, the security, this community that we really want, because that's that's what we really need as a city. Uh, we we need to find out ways that we can work better, because uh, we're not the only ones in the world who are going to have a top level domain. Uh, Berlin is there; they're well prepared. They're all set to submit their application. Uh, Paris is getting ready to do so. Uh, actually, there are two cities that already had them, but they didn't have them as clean slate developments, essentially. Uh, Hong Kong and Singapore got them as you know, sort of nation states. Uh, they, they got them early on, and uh, they, they went to college, to the colleges, and, and they never had an opportunity to really look at it and develop it as a, as a bottom-up design for, for the city. So, uh, but other cities are going to get top-level domains, and they're going to organize their resources. And uh, so we need to find out how we can organize our city, how we can make our city a grand city. Uh, this trust, security that I mentioned earlier, the, the various ways we can create more community through our civics project. These are the things that we have to do. So in summary, we want the, uh, why do we want .myc? We want to create a place on the internet where the world can find our resources. And most important, we want a place on the internet for the city's residents and organizations to find one another. Now, the closing word is number two. Um, you know, we live in a big city, uh, and a great city. But globally, New York City is tiny. It's one-tenth of one percent of the world's population. And it's not going to change. You know, we can go up a million in population, we can go down a million in population, but we're never going to be more than a tenth of one percent of the world's population. Squished into these 400 square miles. And so, so it's my idea that we really have to, uh, you know, embrace the, the internet and one another and find out how we use this resource to connect with one another, to find out how we run this, this tiny little space on the planet that we have, one-tenth of one percent of the world's population, in a better way. Uh, historically, we've done this well. We are a global city, we're a great city. Uh, you know, we've developed in the past, we've developed shipping piers, train stations, airports. The 21st century, we need a TLD. We need a top-level domain, we need access also, but that's an issue for another night. But we need a top-level domain when people have access so they can find things. And uh, you're invited to uh, help us out. You know, uh, really, as I said earlier, what we need to do is we need to figure out how we can organize ourselves. We have to convince the ICANN that New York City wants this. We have to create a groundswell that ICANN says, yes, indeed, New York. The New York community is behind this. We have to organize ourselves in a proper way. We have to make sure that the resources from this get funneled into our, into our city, into making it a better, uh, a better place so that we can have these tools that allow us to connect with one another. And uh, we have to find out how to do that quickly by uh, by next March, by when we have our before we before then, so we have our application in. 
I liked uh, Mr. McPhee suggested that in one of the publications for this meeting saying that what we really want to do is we want to send Tom to Paris to tell the, tell the ICANN that we want that NYC for for uh, New York City, and uh, you know, I'm going there, and, uh, but I, I do need more support, and anybody who wants to help us out is perfectly welcome to do so. Uh, we have recently, with the great help of um, my associate, who has arrived uh, uh, just a few minutes ago, uh, let's see if I can do this. Some of the resources that we have, I clicked the wrong button here, I'm gonna be in trouble. We recently started uh, a, uh, a website, more of an action website, uh, based upon uh, where you can sign a petition or you can give your advice, you can go on our wiki, you can donate. I understand that donate button works. Uh, I haven't seen much demonstration of it yet, but uh, we encourage anybody out there to uh, give it a shot. Uh, you can come to an event. We have tonight's event, and I'm really anxious to have more events scheduled. If you click on that wiki button, it'll take you to our, uh, we have this extensive wiki that, uh, uh, you know what a wiki is, but I'm sure most in the room do, but you can, you can write to this page here. You go up, you go up there where it says edit, and you have to, I think you have to sign in a little bit first, but it's a very easy process, and you can start entering your ideas as to how you think this thing could be, how it can be worked, how we should uh, invest our funds. Uh, but what, what funds do we have? Assuming this thing works, you know, assuming we're successful and everybody in New York, well, every business wants a, a domain name, every student coming out of college wants a domain name, there's a chance that we'll have uh, excess funds over expenses. And, and those funds will be put into civic education. And uh, so we we're hopeful that that works. And, and this place here, this, this wiki, is one of the places where we uh, gather ideas, where we put our ideas out there, and we invite the public to participate in the process and tell us, what do you think about it? This is New York City's wiki. We're just part of, we're part of the process. We're trying to figure out our governance. We're looking for additional members of our board of directors. We're trying to figure out the, the governance of the whole process because it's, it's really, it's, it's the future of New York City. And one other one here, let's see, this is my last little shot here. And uh, what we did was, um, uh, uh, with Matt Cooper Ryder, who came in late, he's in the back, may say a word or two. But what, we, what we're trying to do, one of the ways we're trying to engage the public is, is this wiki again. And we've, we've created it, we're trying to break the tasks down of, of accomplishing this job into sort of, if I may uh, mangle a word, uh, uh, do a uh, Wikipediaization of, of the process, you know, to, to break all the little steps down that we need to do to make this thing happen into tiny little, tiny little uh, easy events, to easy tasks that people to get involved with. So, uh, you know, on this dot city thing, if you want to get involved with that, uh, you can find it through our website. There's, there's lots of information there, but there's a lot more we need to do. And the goal is to engage the public in the process and help us think through, the, think through how, how we do this, how we achieve this. And that's, that's all I have to say, and uh, I, I thank you for listening. If you have any questions, i will uh, happy to answer them. Yes. Are there certain terms or certain type of domain names that you just as a, a matter of policy not uh, allow to be uh, Yeah, there's a, there's a good, well, I mean, we, uh, that's kind of up to the community. I don't know whether we... The sugar company. The sugar company, there is one. I, I don't know. But, you, uh, but you're saying that you're going to regulate the domain names you talked earlier about, the community aspect of it that you want it to be children friendly and all this kind of thing so how are you, how are you planning to vet entries uh, and isn't is this a practical is this really I, I, i'm told you know all the lawyers who tell me that you know they tell me it's impossible that it has to be that it will be something you know it'll be just like dot com but I, I don't think that needs to be so. I, I think we can work out a process where the residents decide who has what, uh, how, how names are used. You know, that we can come up with some type of an agreement saying, listen, uh, you know, you check off that I'm not gonna be a thief, I'm not gonna be a spammer, I'm not going to have this or that uh, offensive thing. You know, there's a, uh, uh, the FCC has seven dirty words, you know, are we gonna issue those seven names? Uh, I don't know, it's up to the New York community. It's not, this is a, it's a not-for-profit, we're looking for people to get involved. We're looking for a process to make these decisions. And uh, none have been made because we're, we're just not to that point yet. We, one of the things we have to do is we have to see the, the request for proposals. We haven't seen the request for proposals from ICANN. 
as to what they want. We haven't seen the draft, we haven't seen the final request for proposals. So some of these decisions uh, hinge upon what that request for proposals say. But the idea is to, to make it, you know, a little more, you know, somewhat more sophisticated than, uh, uh, than, dot, uh, than dot .gov or dot .edu. I mean, it is New York City, but we don't want it to be just anybody can come in and do whatever they want like they do on .com. Uh, we want the people, we want to have some, uh, some type of control that if they're using it, if we find someone's using it to bilk someone, to rob someone, to abuse someone, we want to be able, we want to have a process set up so that maybe we can identify that, you know, that if, that if you see uh, names that are being abused, you might have a place to report it. And as a community, we can decide what, what, what's appropriate and what's not appropriate. It's our .nyc. If we choose it to be, it'll be our .nyc, and we can use it the way that, that we think our city should run. So how do we do that? It's all involved with governance, setting up systems so that we, we have a means to identify these things and resolve these decisions. And it means we have to get involved. We have to look upon this, the small one-tenth of one percent of the world's population, that this is a gem, our city, this DynamoYC is, is an important part of it, and we need to use it and manage it wisely. Yeah. Currently, uh, if I go to GoDaddy, I want to put it on the uh -huh. uh, and uh, I'm trying to Primarily what they do is, if I'm interested in getting it away, they simply check to determine that's been taken back. Right. Okay, so let's say that um, uh, Mr. Smooth, I try to, uh, to see if there's a kiddieporn.com or free cocaine. <coughs> I'm trying to think of things that are somebody to find that um, I don't know that GoDaddy or the, the you know, dot com industry is really set up to blocks and something like that because of what it, the meaning of the term. Uh, now what you're looking to do in terms of dot NYC, if I'm understanding correctly, you might want to prevent someone from getting the kitty porn or the free cocaine dot NYC domain. Uh, but of course, the human, human imagination, probably people can think of offensive Domains without the, those, you know, the words the FCC is like faster than you can <laughs> program any computer to stop. Mm -hmm. So, uh, are you going to have uh, like a a vetting period where a human person uh, will review this and maybe flag applications that uh, might be uh, offensive? Uh, well, I don't know that we could have a huge staff that would do that or anything of that sort. But perhaps you know, as names are issued, maybe there could be a a process where that you know they would shoot up on a screen, and if someone thought that it was offensive, they could highlight it. And we could vote as a community as to whether this was an offensive word that we didn't want to be issued under our moniker. That you know this was not New York City that we didn't want to have uh, you know kitty porn NYC out there, and we should be able. I, I think you know again, it's not my decision; it's our decision that we that we should have the right to. Uh, as a resident of New York, I think we should have a right to decide what names are, are issued. And uh, you know, clearly, 99%, uh, 99% uh, of them are perfectly all right. There are, you know, there are a couple hundred thousand businesses that exist already. They they should have access to names that reflect their businesses early on and uh, uh, things of that sort. But um, I, if we can develop a process like that, I, I think it'd be uh, beneficial to us all. When you say vote as a community, how do you actually see the community being involved in that voting? Uh, well, I mean, just, you know, again, we're not nearly there, but I, I would think that perhaps that as names are, are, are you sign up for a name, and maybe there's a, a delay of a, an hour or a few hours, and it, it posts up on a, on a website, and if it looks, you know, if it's uh, new movie, great movies.nyc, it goes through. If there's but, some... But would, I mean, how, how would the community... How would the community be involved? What would be the mechanism? The mechanism would be that you, you want to know what new, new, new domain names are being taken? Sign up here. Every new domain name goes your way. Or you go to a website and you can see them scroll. Wouldn't, wouldn't that be open to abuse that somebody could, could sort of pack that community and vote down their competition or something? Obviously that has to be worked out very, very carefully. Yeah. If it's, you know, uh, there'll be abuses of that sort, people will try that for sure. So uh, we need to work out mechanisms to do that. You know, so people object. You, you have an objection process. You say, well, listen, that it's not really it. You know, they're abusing the process. They're gaming the process. How, how can we set up another mechanism to overcome that? So I mean, there are. You know, if you look at a place like uh, uh, Wikipedia, they've had ex you know they've extensive experience doing things of this sort. We can learn from them, and um, hopefully we can come up with a better system. You know, I mean, there's a lot of experience out there. There have been 263. There, is, there, is, there are no TLDs of this nature 
really. But no, there, there are there, restricted there, TLDs, like I think museum. Uh, yeah, they're very restricted. You know, yeah, they they're not doing very well, but uh, they have they're restricted. Organizations that, that mm -hmm. you know you have to be accredited. Jobs to get and crawl and things of that sort. Yes. Uh, but there haven't been city TLDs at this point. This will be the first time that there are city top-level domains, and, and we think other cities around the world will also uh, want to um, uh, adopt similar policies, perhaps. We're, we're, we're talking to them, and uh, we think it would be reasonable. You know, it just seems reasonable to us that cities have a right to, um, uh, to control their uh, internet resource. And uh, the residents of that city have a right. We certainly, you know, we're in the United States. We have absolutely we have First Amendment rights. We have a whole slew of laws that we have to deal with. But within, you know, the scope of uh, general acceptability, I think that uh, good-natured, good residents of the city can come up with a system that will uh, that that nearly everyone will find acceptable, and that will make our city a better place to live. It doesn't, you know, we're not stopping anybody if we go to a .com and .info or wherever they want. They go where every other, you know, there'll be 200, there'll be thousands of other domain names at certain point, top-level domains. We're just, you know, they're opening up this process that they're going, that we're going to be applying for next year. Then they're going to keep it open, and they're. They've estimated at this point that anywhere between 10,000 and 2 million top-level domains can exist under the current system. So, I mean, we have 263 of them at this point. Uh, there will be lots and lots of uh, top-level domains that if you want to get a, a point across in the city and you feel .myc is unduly restrictive, you can go someplace else. But, you know, it's New York City. The New York City community is not going to be very restrictive on these things. I mean, we have a, a very broad view. We, we don't want people st robbing us. We don't want people uh, uh, spamming us. You know, simple things that we can work it's on. It's hard to judge these things. So it's, it's, a, it's a very fine line. But we, we'd be involved in the, pro we have to set up a process where we can judge these things. Where these things be, come before us as, as experts, as, as citizen juries, essentially. That we, we look at these issues and we decide on, on this name or that name or that problem or, or the other and make a decision as to whether this is acceptable or not. But on the, on the next point, you know, when you talked about community backing, I mean, why shouldn't this be something that belongs to the city and that the council, the city council, should should uh, be in charge of? Yeah. Uh, well, I, I think that uh, they had they had a similar instance of this uh, some years ago, about 20 years ago, 30 years ago, uh, when they set up the cable systems. Uh, they had the public access channels, and they were a little concerned, uh, public officials were a little, I think, concerned that they, they didn't want to be in a position to be uh, stepping in front of people in terms of what, uh, what, what, what went on those channels, you know? That, uh, and they also didn't want to be responsible for, they didn't want to say no, and they also didn't want to be, they didn't want to be responsible if, if God forbid, a, a breast were to show on it. They didn't want someone showing up to their office and saying, uh, you know, I was watching uh, public access and, and I saw oh, this or that. So they set up these not-for-profits, these see, uh, the, the MNN and Queen's QPTV or whatever, to operate these things. And uh, so uh, I, I think also that uh, historically that uh, it's, it's not governments that operate these things that, you know, the, the mayor, you know, the you know, mayor sucks. There are a lot of names that I don't think the mayor or the, the city administration really wants to be in a position to, uh, to make that control. Do you need to get a, a charter from, uh, from, from the city, do you think? Uh, I, I would hope some support, you know, and indicate to, to in well, order to... The, the, the cable company got to have some kind of charter yeah, with the city. That's because they were digging up the street, you know. What, theoretically, we don't need... ICANN could give it to, to you and say, uh, you know, you can convince ICANN to do it. The city has absolutely no say on it. I mean, this is not a matter of digging up the streets. There's no, there's no say that the city... It's NYC. It's not the city's... Uh, ICANN would require to see the community support from some uh, group. They could change their rules. I'm just saying the city has no call on ICANN. Mm -hmm. You know, the ICANN does what they want. And, and I think it's a reasonable process to say that they want to have the city community. And, and if the city community turns out to be the mayor and the city council and the controller and the public advocate saying we are the city community and we have the, the business interests and the, and the uh, uh, visitors uh, all behind us and uh, we think it should be given to this or that organization and we're setting up a separate agency. My guess would be that the ICANN would say, well, that, that's, you know, that's, it. that's the city, you know. I, 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 my suggestion is that there's another way to do it, that a not-for-profit is a better way to do it, that the example that was set with the public access channels is a reasonable one. But we need a, a, much, better, a, a much better way to control this not-for-profit. I mean, the way they control the public access channels is that the money is controlled by them. You know, so that if, um, 
if the uh, uh, one of the public access channels doesn't do what the borough president wants and the city administration wants, they don't get the money to operate. You know, so th there's a lot of there's a lot of control there. I mean, the contract is not between the access channels and the uh, um, and the cable company. It's it's the city. So uh, so we need so so we don't have as is it part of public access channels. The fact that they they don't censor what goes out on those channels. That's they get away with that because they're not the city. I mean, they, right. they couldn't do that if they were the city. Just for the record, the yeah. borough president is very, very happy with the public access in New York. And to answer the question about the censorship, no, unless it's an egregious community violation um, of, of the vicinity, that those stations are completely uncensored. But they run very well, all the public access channels in the city. I have MNN, I know, does Queens, QPTV's not bad. and. Um, also, and um, uh, you know, it, it's a reasonable way to do it. But the difference is, that, and, and, the, and the, the complication with with what we're proposing is that the control of this needs to be worked out. You know, we're a, a typical not-for-profit. The way we are now, we're a small not-for-profit. To get become a not-for-profit in New York, you need three people to sign some papers. The state will give you a, a document that says you're a not-for-profit, and you can operate as a not-for-profit forever, and you can keep appointing your friends and your relatives to the board of directors. We don't want it to be that way. We're looking for a process. We're looking very strongly for different ways to operate this so that the public has much more input in it, whether it's through advisory boards, through its uh, public uh, ex officio seats on a board of directors, uh, what have you. You know, we're really anxious, uh, we're really uh, open to, and uh, want, want to be transparent in our operation, and we want, we want uh, everybody to have access to our, to our means of... So, uh, also, most, most uh, registries, um, uh, uh, they just do the names, and that's their business, and they leave everything else to everybody else. So you're talking about running a directory as well? I don't know that we. I don't know that we. I don't know that we'd actually run the directory. Uh, I, so I think you, it so might you take, would, you would there might take proposals to, to. Yeah, there might be some you know, like certain names like, like gov.nyc. We, we've met with uh, well, hotels.nyc. Well, so. hotels.nyc. There may be existing organizations that you know have, have uh, the experience and the expertise to do that. But you know, shoes.nyc. You know, is, you know who gets shoes.nyc? That may be auctioned off. I, I don't know exactly how we'll do that. You know, if we can auction off some names that raise a lot of money that are used for civic education, that's a good idea. But what names should we set aside? I mean, we wouldn't we wouldn't consider uh, auctioning off gov.nyc, for instance. That has you know that that's uh, that's where our government's going to operate from. Uh, there are a number of other, you know, sustainable.nyc. You know, it would be nice not to auction that off to somebody who's going to sell uh, clothes that are, uh, you know, made from sustainable uh, bottle caps or something of that sort. You know, we would want, it would be nice if we could get someone who is really uh, into the sustainability movement to uh, operate that, that name. And if we can set up mechanisms to do this, all the better. And then that involves getting people, in, that, that requires getting people involved. There has to be a lot of people involved with this process, or else it's going to go too slow, it's going to be inadequate. We need the public involved in the process. Um, what about Snapple NYC? Snapple, they probably have a trademark, and they could probably... They, well, I know that's specifically what I'm asking about, is yeah. trademark. Uh, yeah, NYC. well, I, I think that the license that we would get from ICANN doesn't allow us to issue like New York Times dot NYC or American Express dot NYC. We don't have a right to auction that would, off and start a competitive. Would, would they, would they, would they want that? Just like they, I mean, they want, they want this, they love to sell Snapple in the schools and I'm sure they would love to have Snapple dot NYC. So I'm just asking, it's a similar question. What, I mean, speaking, speaking, to, sorry, to, not, speaking to the question of how you envision ICANN seeing what they're calling the GOTLDs as being administered. Now you have a vision where they're going to be very civically administered through some kind of a central agency, which vets it, you know, more you know, community wisdom. Um, I'm not sure where I can, you know, what they're thinking of how they see the, the GOTLD vision. Um, but that question is going to come up, uh, including trademarks and certainly including um, what we what we would, what would what do we want to call the seamless just. Um, but, I mean, Snapple is, a, is a, a trademark, an international trademark, probably. They, they have a right to that. And, and no, no, they would want it. No, you're, you're totally missing the point. No, they want it. It's not like someone else, you know, with, like, right. you're going to get it. Right. No, they want it. Right. As, soon as, as soon as you open this up, they're going to want Snapple and Right. Right. And, so are you going to and American it? Express is going to want American right. Express on NYC. So you're, saying, so you're saying you're not going to include any trademarks in the TLD? No, no, no. We, would, we, would, we wouldn't get the right. 
for .NYC unless we agree to issue trademarks, to the trademark owners. Would the UDRP apply to, uh, to um... uh, I'm not sure. We, we could conceivably, it depends again on the RFP, what it says. Okay. And it's conceivable that we could have our own because I think the ICANN is not particularly interested in having a, uh, um, uh, the issues, everybody who has a complaint about the city uh, to go running to ICANN. So I, I think they'd be more, more likely to, uh, uh, to look upon us favorably if we could set up some type of process where issues are, are handled locally. Yeah. So uh, I do notice that uh, I think the librarian just came in and told I, us that I one, last uh, one last question was what she said. She said she wanted one last question. Okay, how are you going to raise them up? Um, well, the, the, there are different phases in, in the project. You know, the, the most difficult one is the application phase. And uh, we're, we, we've spoken to some foundations and we think some foundations might provide some funds. Uh, we're not really sure of that yet. We don't know how much money we need, you know. It's the big difference if it's $50,000 or, or, or hopefully less. We're going to say that cities have been harmed by the process of, of issuing TLDs without considering cities. And we're going to argue that it, it should be less than $50,000. But if it's $50,000 or $250,000, it's a big difference in how much money we have to raise. Can you share this? Can you issue shares as a? Uh, like I don't know. I, I don't. I, I don't know. If we can. I mean, as a, a not-for-profit, I, I don't think we can. There, but there are a number of ways to do it. And, and then, you know, w once we have the license from .m from uh, ICANN, then, then it becomes a lot easier to raise the funds to do the technology and, and what have you. And, and we have an advantage also in that we don't have a lot of these TLDs. They, they need big budgets for um, uh, for marketing. And uh, I don't think we have that problem in the city here because, you know, it's a small little place. We don't have to advertise. Typically, a TLD has to advertise globally. Uh, we don't have to advertise globally. You know, we're only interested in our city. Everybody within, that, uh, within those borders, those 8 million people, are the, are the ones that we're interested in. And uh, so we, our, our expenses should be less than uh, a typical TLD. And I gather that we should end there. Unless anybody has a pressing question, and uh, I'll be around. I'm not going. I guess I am going. I'll be kicked out of here with the rest of you. But uh, uh, thank you very much. Thank you.